I just loved looking at scripture to see, mm-hmm. okay, God, how did you use people's ordinary lives um, in amazing ways? And that's, that's what he specializes in. And yeah. you even look at the life of, life of Jesus. I mean, he, yes, he did mighty miraculous things, you know, he's, he's God, but he also walked along the roads. He attended mm-hmm. weddings and funerals. He taught in synagogues. He shared lots of meals. He mm-hmm. helped children. He mm-hmm. washed feet and he shared one cup of water with one woman beside a well. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, he was the savior of the world. He is the savior of the world. And so if nothing is too insignificant for our savior, <laughs> there's nothing that's too insignificant for me and for you. You're listening to God Hears Her, a podcast for women where we explore the stunning truth that God hears you. Join our community of encouraging one another and learning to lean on God through scripture, story, and conversation at GodHearsHer.org. God Hears Her. Seek and she will find. Vivian, I am so excited about this guest today, mainly because the work that she does is in the exact season that I am in. And the season that I've been in lately is there's a really, 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 really big circumstance happening personally. And I just am longing for God to just, I pray today, I need you, Lord, to show up in a really big and radical way. And he keeps taking me through this circumstance and showing me these little moments where Mm -hmm. he's at. Mm-hmm. And I keep discounting them. Do you, have you ever experienced that? Oh, yeah. So relatable. Oh. I mean, no, I'm with you. I think it's so easy to think about, well, God being big. And so he mm-hmm. needs to move big and work big and answer big. And that's why I'm also excited to be able to dive into this conversation with Rachel Adams this morning. So. Yay! Welcome to the podcast, Rachel. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this this topic is near and dear to my heart, so I'm excited to dive in. <laughs> well, Rachel, I've enjoyed following you on social media. So I follow you on Instagram, and I've been able to just see like a little bit of behind the scenes of just some of the things that God has been doing in your life. And I, I know that some of the topics that we're going to dive into, they come from a place of your own wrestling and not something that you've just arrived to suddenly. Mm -hmm. It's been little moments. I keep dropping hints. It's been little moments in your life that have brought you to what what you talk about now. But I would love for the listeners that may not know who you are, I would love for you to share, you know, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Give us a little bit of a back history of, you know, maybe little girl, Rachel. Yeah. So uh, I'm born and raised in the same lake town. It's a tiny town in Kentucky. Our claim to fame here is we are the largest man-made lake in the United States and we are the houseboat capital of the world. So that's kind of fun. I know. Yeah. My brother's the mayor. I I mean, when I say it's a, it's a small town and my whole family still lives here. It's, but it's just so quaint. And I've met my husband the first day of college and he loves to fish. And so I didn't have to twist his arm too much to to come to this little lake town. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think I feel like I know everybody here cause I've been born and raised here. My brothers are still here. I'm the middle girl of two brothers. My parents are divorced. My mom worked really hard, you know, trying to raise us and keep house and work and do all those things. And so a lot of my memories were, and my family even makes fun of me because like I was, I was just alone a lot and I am introverted. And so I have a lot of memories like rollerblading around the neighborhood. Did anybody else rollerblade? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. My family's like, please do that again. We want to see you do that. <laughs> I would ride my bike. I would swim a lot. I'd play with like the neighbors um, or just play alone in my room. My my parents, they did the best that they could for sure. I have no doubt about that. Um, my mom especially just really worked hard and mm-hmm. tried to give us a, just a really sweet life. My dad did remarry when I was, I think, in fourth grade. He was not a Christian at the time. Um, but then when he remarried, uh, he married a Christian woman. So we started to go to church at that time. And then I, I had to, my salvation moment in middle school. And so things really started to change at that point when my dad mm-hmm. um, found the Lord. And so then that led, mm-hmm. you know, the rest of the family to find the Lord as well. And of course, as you know, that changes everything. Oh, it does. It does. So your whole family knows the Lord now? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody does. Wow. Yeah. yeah what a blessing. There's a story even in the brokenness, huh? 
Mm-hmm. That, Absolutely. Absolutely. That God is a God of redemption. Yeah. yeah. I think about the whole trajectory changing from there. Yeah. My dad is, he's yeah. very active in my life now and in my children's life. He's always, mm-hmm. you know, where he was absent in, in my life growing up. And um, he's, he's trying to make it up now and just puts forth a lot of effort and a lot mm-hmm. of care and a lot of love for all of us. That's wow. really beautiful. And Rachel, that's a testament to you learning forgiveness, mm-hmm. which is hard, especially to those that we love when they could have made a different choice. And so I'm curious uh, if you would be a little bit more vulnerable in sharing like that journey of forgiving your dad to this point now. And I mean, how was that processing that as a little girl to adulthood? Yeah. If I'm being honest, it's still hard. Um, yeah. it, just even your question evokes emotion in me. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think when I was saved, I, it was actually at a Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames um, play and I was saved out of fear. I just didn't want to go to hell, you know, but I knew nothing of God's love. And mm-hmm. um, because I just being honest, I, I hadn't experienced a father's love, Yeah, at least in the way that he loved us in the way he knew, but not in the way that maybe I received. And so, um, it wasn't until I then had, I have two children, two middle school aged children. So my son, Will is going to be 15 in a couple of weeks. And so in, in that first season of having him, I, he had a lot of health issues and he cried a lot. And so I cried a lot <laughs> in the oh. first year. <laughs> I was just really lonely and I was, you know, nursing him and he wouldn't take a bottle. And so oh. there were so many times that I would be sitting in that rocking chair and I would just be nursing him and holding him. And I wouldn't, anytime I'd try to put him in the crib, he would cry. So I'd pick him up again. And so I just sat in that (laughs) rocking chair so many hours. (laughs) I didn't have any social media. I didn't want to make a sound. And so I thought, what am I going to do with my time? Um, Mm -hmm. And so I started to read my Bible for the first time. And it was during that time Mm -hmm. that I really, as I was learning how to become a mother, I started to learn to see and view God as my father. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as I was holding my son, Will, God was really holding me. And so the reason I tell that story, because I, I do believe in that my salvation was secure when I um, accepted the Lord as my savior, but I didn't, none, none of my behavior, none of my actions, none of my thinking, I had no frame of reference of what God was or who sure. he was until truly I became a mother and had this experience. And so I, I guess the reason I'm bringing that up is as I started to learn of God's love for me and of as him as my father and my friend and as my Lord and just the, the development and his characteristics and our relationship, it worked in my heart as far as starting to have compassion and seeing my dad um, in a new light and to, mm-hmm. to answer your question, to begin to forgive and extend him mercy. But I'll mm-hmm. say it's still a process, you know, um, anybody that's grown mm-hmm. up in a divorced home, holidays are still hard. You know, you used mm-hmm. to have blended families. My mom actually, she lives in Ohio and I don't get to see her as often as I used to. And then you see other families that are all together or, you know, grandparents picking up their kids from school and yours aren't, you know, and so there's just yeah. all, there's a lot of times there's just those little splinters or, yeah. you know, that, that just Little pierce groups. your heart sometimes that just trigger old wounds. And then you have to forgive again, um, mm. because it's not exactly how you wished that it would have been or what, how you would have wanted it. But now, uh, as we have our own children and my husband is, I believe a great father, we're trying to do things differently. Um, yeah. we want to do things differently for our family. And so to answer your question, it's, it's a process and mm-hmm. he's asked for forgiveness. And so I think that that helps um, wow. for those listening that maybe they have somebody in their life that was absent or wasn't loving that hasn't asked for the forgiveness. I think that that's even more complicated. And that just mm-hmm. comes from the Lord knowing and realizing how much we're forgiven. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think as a mom, I actually saw this um, or listened to this. Maybe it was just on Instagram. I saw it somewhere and I don't know who to credit it to. But it said, be patient with your parents. It's their mm. first time living too. Oh. And I think that just hit me so profoundly because mm. sometimes as I'm raising my children, I'm doing the best I can too. You know, we're dealing with our own heartache. We're dealing with fatigue. We're dealing with stress. And mm. I don't always get it right with my children. I probably don't always make them feel super <laughs> loved, you know, even though our heart is in the right place. And so I think mm. just becoming a mother myself has given me a lot more compassion and grace and mercy for my own parents. Mm. Rachel, thank you so much for sharing your willingness to be able to open your heart 
and kind of bring us into your journey, I just feel so drawn to you. Like I just so see your heart for the Lord and your authenticity. And um, I just, I love that. And I imagine as you are seeking to minister to people through your words, um, that that is what will shine through. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, you know, you said there were certain little splinters and little losses, little griefs, those moments. And you said those are opportunities for moments of forgiveness. Would you say that that was a time in your life when you started paying attention to the little things? Was that out of grief that you were paying attention to little things? Um, I actually think it was probably a different time. I think it's easier now to like reflect. It's always so much easier to reflect and see Mm. how, you know, like the timeline of your life and how those, all those little things added up cumulatively to me like, Oh, this big moment. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, But in the, in the midst, you don't quite see it um, like that. But I think this, Mm. this idea of a little, I mean, I'm I'm a, from a little town in Kentucky. I'm just like a small, you know, I just, it's like little old me in my little house with my little old family, you know? <laughs> and so many times I just, especially as a stay at home mom, um, you know, I, I used to work, we have a family business and just to give a little bit more background, my dad did, he started a business. He's an entrepreneur. My family is very entrepreneurial and he um, is very performance oriented. And so he would have us mm-hmm. sign contracts that we would um, set a goal at a specific time and we would have to sign it and date it that we agreed that we were going to work towards this goal and accomplish it. <laughs> so, wow. okay. so wow. that, you know, and that can be a good quality in some ways. It's like, okay, when, when you give us a task, we're going to get it done, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, <commitment>. yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> however, it, it can also be very defeating if mm-hmm. you don't accomplish what you thought you could in the amount of time that you wanted to. And so it's this dance of trying to balance my performance and earn love, you know, based Mm. on what I just shared earlier. And so I think I've had just had to always kind of fight that tendency um, to strive and earn Mm. and get my value from what I'm doing. And Mm. and I want people to be proud of me. I want to be validated. I want that affirmation because I didn't get that as a, as a child. Mm. And so, you know, I would even my husband, when I, I worked for a while and then we had children and I stayed home and moving from like boardroom to playroom was tricky because there's not as many things to just quantify. <laughs> there's not as many, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you're not getting the, um, the report at the end of your, your year, like an annual review. <laughs> Nobody's right. doing that for you. And so, you know, it's like oh, my husband would come home and he'd say, well, how are you? And so I'd say, well, I cleaned up Cheerios. I nursed for this many hours. <laughs> I, I did some laundry. I went to the grocery, you know, I picked up and played with toys blocks and dolls and trains, you know, like this is what I did again today. <laughs> you know? mm. And so um, I think that, you know, it was just, again, me wanting affirmation and validation from my husband. But the thing is, is I do that with the Lord too. Mm. I was like, Lord, and you know, when I go down, you know, when I go to sleep at night and I'm praying and kind of re- rehashing the day, it's like, Lord, I read my Bible today. I prayed today. I had a conversation with a friend today. I, you know, sent this email. I recorded a podcast like, Lord, are you proud of me? Mm. <laughs> you know, and it sounds mm-hmm. so silly to say that, but it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's, I'm being honest. And so I, it was just this moment of like, Rachel, that felt like the Lord was like, Rachel, I love you apart from anything that you do. You know, that yes, there's value in what you do, but you cannot gain your value from what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so it just put me on this search through scripture. Okay, God, what do you say about my inherent significance? Because clearly I am trying to find it in all the wrong places. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's so good. There's so much there to unpack. So you have really... Um, captured this idea that God works in the little things and the little things are kind of what build up to us being able to see God even more clearly and even having a watchfulness to even look for God. Tell us that process and how that came about in your own life and how you've been able to help others to see that as well. Well, as I was looking in scripture, I started to notice First of all, God has always used very ordinary people in very ordinary places, and he's the one that multiplies everything. Mm. And if you really look at even just reading scripture, you know, I'm actually reading um, the Bible through in 90 days right now. 
-hmm. And it's, I've never done that before, but it's been really beautiful because you can really see it in, you know, just as one full story, but gosh, I can read David's entire life story that way in a day. Mm -hmm. And so you forget that he spent hours shepherding in the field and playing his harp and running from Saul and, you know, like yeah. just having meals, like this, these very ordinary everyday tasks that he probably was doing, but yet we just focus on Goliath and Bathsheba, you know, <laughs> you know? and so if you really look like the entirety of his life, we look at these two really big moments and I'm like, wow, or I just was sharing before mm. we hit record, you can read Esther's story really quickly, but yet yeah. we look at her and like, man, she saved an entire people group, but we mm. forget how many hours she probably spent working on all the beauty products, <laughs> you know, trying to take a whole year in yeah, a spa or something did, like that, right? there you go. <laughs> but like how, you know, and so I think we kind of almost look at our mm. own lives that way too. Mm, We're tempted yeah. to just be like, well, what have I accomplished today? What did I do? But truly, mm. if we even wrote down our life story at the end of our lives, we'd have some really big, amazing moments too. We mm. just don't seem to, to look at it that way. And mm. so I just loved looking at scripture to see, mm. okay, God, how did you use people's ordinary lives um, in amazing ways? And that's that's what he specializes in. And mm. you even look at the life of, life of Jesus. I mean, he, yes, he did mighty miraculous things. You know, he's, he's God, but he also walked along the roads. He attended mm. weddings and funerals. He taught in synagogues. He shared lots of meals. He helped mm. children. He mm -hmm. washed feet and he shared one cup of water with one woman beside a well. And mm. so, I mean, he was the savior of the world. He is the savior of the world. And so if nothing is too insignificant for our savior, <laughs> there's nothing that's too insignificant for me and for you. And mm. so we can go to weddings. We can go to funerals. We can go to church. We can hold children. We can share meals, make meals, clean up meals. <laughs> yes. You know, we can do all those same things and go to coffee and have a cup of coffee with one friend. Like that mm. matters. If Jesus lived his life that way, I'm okay living my life that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good word. I, I hear you saying like, there's no shame in embracing the little things. And yet mm. it seems like we carry our life. If we're, if we're making small choices or we almost dilute the things that somebody else would see as small, but maybe to us it's big, but we may diminish it. We carry shame about it instead of embracing that this is the small acts in our life are actually significant. When I look back on my life, most of the moments involved people and it involved mm. people that probably didn't realize that they had a significant impact on me. Mm. You know, I think about the neighbors. I think about going back to meet Rachel as a little girl. There were families in middle school and in high school that I would go to their houses and we would share meals and they would pray and they would invite me to church and they would take me on trips. And I was witnessing mm. and I was watching the way that they're living their lives. And mm. even just going back a little bit further, you know, I said I was a lonely young mom and finally got up the courage to go to toddler tales when Will was a, a year old, which sounds ridiculous, but as an introverted, you know, scared anxious mom. It was a big deal for me at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I went mm -hmm. and there was a mom that invited me, like she said, hello. She was, she was extroverted. Yeah. And so she <laughs> totally, she um, introduced herself to me and she invited me to go to mops, which was mothers of preschoolers. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I got the courage to go to that. And um, there, another extroverted woman that said hello and introduced herself to me. She invited me to go to Wednesday night and Wednesday night Bible study. So again, got up the courage to do that. Mm. And again, somebody said hello, introduced themselves, invited me to come to Sunday morning service. I went to that. Somebody invited me to go to Sunday school. I went to that. Wow. Somebody invited me to start leading Bible study. And I guess the reason I tell that whole story, that rabbit trail is to say it only was me going to a place somebody saying hello, somebody mm. extending an invitation mm. and me being willing to say yes and go. Like those are really, if you really think about it, those are really small things, really small decisions, really small actions and choices, but it set into motion. It changed the whole trajectory of my life. I okay. still attend to that church. I actually <laughs> still lead that Bible study. Wow. It was during that Bible study that I got the idea to write this book. And now I'm talking to you. And so I think I just, you know, <laughs> okay. and then you look back and you're like, oh, that was just, I just said hello to Rachel. It's no big deal. Oh, it was a big deal. It changed mm. everything. And so I think when I, you know, I'm, I'm just so passionate about this because I'm like, we have no idea the next encounter at the ball field, 
um, it, it, on our walk in our neighborhood, in the grocery store, in the workplace, in the cubicle beside you. We have no idea what God is going to do with that next encounter. So just say hello and be obedient to the Holy Spirit prompting to do what God is asking you to do. Mm. Extend the invitation. Say, let's go to have coffee. And you never know what God will do with that. Mm. Oh, I love that. There's such purpose in recognizing that as we just go about doing our daily life and brushing up against people, strangers and friends and family, that all of that matters, our words, our posture, our willingness. Yeah. And there's no knowing what's going on in the back behind the scenes with that person. And so to think about Rachel as lonely and introverted, but wanting to connect mom and, and God seeing that and knowing, okay, I just need to connect these two at just the right time. There was a, you, your heart was prepared and obviously you had to take that step of courage, but God had been working and you were recognizing the need. And then to think that it's just so beautiful to see the interconnectedness of it all and that nothing is haphazard mm -hmm. and that we are just on, on assignment as we just go about yeah. our day to day. I love that. Yeah. Rachel, something that you said, you said, you know, paying attention to the Holy Spirit's prompting. And that resonated with me. There's moments in where I experience the Holy Spirit that moves me to tears. So I know it's not my voice. <laughs> and then there's times where I'm like, is this you or is this me? Is this selfish? Is this your will? Speak to somebody that's listening right now that maybe has wrestled with that of not really knowing. I struggle with it. I mean, I, I know exactly what you're saying, Erin. And I think, number one, I try to start my day just in prayer. Lord, help me to hear mm -hmm. you. Help me to mm -hmm. see you. Help me to listen to you. Help me to obey you. And so I think it begins with, with prayer and begins with knowing what his voice sounds like by being in his word. You know, we can't know what he says if he's, if we're not in his word. And so I think those two key components mm -hmm. are really key. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have that, that knowing it's like a, just a, a fire and a peace and, and, you know, anything he's telling us to do will not be con contradictory to his word. And so I, I think the majority of the time, if you just have that inkling, like, oh, I should really forgive or, mm -hmm. oh, I should really maybe reach out. That person came to my mind again. Maybe I should mm -hmm. just send a text. I felt like I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, I was in line at a little Caesars <laughs> getting ready to get my hot and ready. Yeah. And there was a homeless man that was sitting um, right in front. And I just felt like the Lord was, Rachel, you need to give that man a pizza. Mm -hmm. So I went through the hot and ready line, got him a pizza, got him a drink, gave it to him. And he threw it back at me and was angry. And I got back in my car and then I was angry. I'm like, Lord, you told me to give that man some pizza. <laughs> like, I know I heard you. Why did you tell me to do that if he was just going to react in such a like unkind mm. way? Why did I, why did I waste the money? Why did I waste the time? Like, I don't understand. And I just honestly felt like in that moment, he's like, you did what I asked you to do. It doesn't mm. matter how people receive it. Wow. Or what response you get to it. Right. Right. You were obedient to me. Mm -hmm. And so when I, so I almost said, you know, oh, every time that I've listened to the Holy Spirit, it's been a, a you know, a good response. That's actually not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes we, you know, I pray I see that man in heaven someday. And he says, Rachel, thank you so much for that pizza. <laughs> But you know, I don't, we don't know what God did in his heart that day. That's right. We have no idea. Right. Do you That's know what? Right. He worked in my heart that day. Mm. Um, and so I think sometimes it is about the other person, but it's going to be about us too. And it's always yeah. going to be about him and his glory. Mm. And so I think that we just, we start to just learn through practice too, you know, and mm. I think that we have to realize there's so much at stake you know, uh, people's eternities are at stake. And I think we forget that often. And uh, I don't know about you all, but I was saved because people shared their testimony with me because they were praying for me because they wanted to disciple me because somebody gave me a Bible because somebody invited me to church. You know, those, those things may seem so small, but they really are so big. And so yeah. anytime we are leading somebody into a, trying to lead somebody into a closer relationship with, with, the Lord, those are good things. And so those are the type of things that um, the Holy Spirit's going to guide us in those fruit mm -hmm. of the spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. If it, mm -hmm. if, if what you're hearing um, 
mimics that kind of fruit, then it's mm. probably him. Mm. It's a great answer. And I love that idea that it's <laughs> the outcome is not in our control. Yeah. And, and, you know, just understanding that we do our part. I think that that must bring such a smile to the Lord's face to see like, you know, you, you follow through on the thing I asked and it just keeps building that discernment to hear the shepherd's voice. Us being able to be in relationship with other believers who are a few seasons ahead of us helps us to discern as well mm -hmm. the shepherd's voice. You're so right in the wise counsel and who you're mm -hmm. following. You know, if you're mm -hmm. really debating on the Holy Spirit, like, did I hear that correctly? Ask some of your wise counsel, ask mm -hmm. some of your friends, ask your husband, other believers that are hearing the Holy Spirit too. Like, did yeah. this, do you think that this is accurate for me? Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that will give confirmation. And then too, you know, as I've been reading the Bible through, I'm in Jeremiah right now. And gosh, he was obedient to the Lord and exactly what the Lord told him. And he still ended up in a muddy cistern, you know, yeah. like, yes. just because we're doing yes. what the Lord has told us to do. Doesn't mean that it's, I mean, going to be end up really beautiful or picture perfect yeah. or with a bow. And so I just want to yeah. give every woman listening, like you can't just think that because I'm hearing the Lord, that it's going to be beautiful and perfect and Easy. Painless. That's and so painless, good. Right? Yeah. Painless, right? Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, think Jeremiah, yes. he preached repentance for 40 years and no one turned. Yes. I mean, yes. I'm just thinking he was so faithful and what a bummer. Yes. I've, I'm wanting in my lifetime to see at least some of my obedience and the fruit okay. of that. And I think it is really a kindness of the Lord when he does give us a glimpse of how the obedience made a difference. But yeah. sometimes yeah. it is like we we don't see the outcome. Yeah. yeah. A friend so. of mine challenged me because I was struggling with that exact same thing. Y'all know I love outcome and results oriented things. <laughs> and so um, we had moved into a house and this, this family that we bought it from had planted this garden and we got to enjoy the fruit of her labor. She had planted, oh. she had pruned and fertilized oh, and watered and done all the things and we got to eat it all you know it's truly the fruit of somebody else's <laughs> labor and so I was telling a friend about this and she said you know Rachel are you okay being the one to plant the seed spiritually speaking and never experience the harvest mm -hmm. and honestly I was like no I want mm -hmm. I want to eat the fruit I want to see it I want to see the results now mm -hmm. here you know mm -hmm. on earth um, and I wish I wasn't that way but I think it just reminds me of how Paul says that he was the one to plant the seed Apollos watered it it, mm. and God made it grow. And mm. so I, I do, I do pray that so many of us get to experience the fruit here on earth, but I really believe that one day in eternity, we're going to see like, Oh, Vivian, Aaron, Rachel, you know, everybody mm. listening, those little seeds that you thought weren't growing. Oh gosh, you planted so many and look, look mm. at the outcome now. Um, and oh. I just, I just can't wait for that day. Mm -hmm. I love it. There's just freedom in what you're saying because I think that we wrestle every day with believing that what we're doing is enough and if we are enough and if it's really worth it. And there's this voice that wants to tell us no mm -hmm. all day long. And so for us to equip ourselves in reading words that speak the truth that you know, these acts actually make really huge and significant changes in our lives and in the lives of others. It adds the value back to what that voice wants to take away. And I'm just so grateful that you reminded us of that today, Rachel. I imagine that there's somebody, and maybe I'm just asking you to pray it over me, uh, but <laughs> somebody that's in the the waiting, you know, in the uncertainty and the wrestling in their spirit of like, am I going to see the fruit like we were talking about? And if I'm not, how do I still sit in the discomfort mm. of the uncertainty? Would you maybe pray over that person and just speak to her? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm that person in so mm. many ways. And I think that voice that you were talking about, that is so the enemy. He mm -hmm. wants nothing more than to discourage us and defeat us and keep us believing that what we're doing doesn't matter yeah. because then mm -hmm. we don't do anything at all, but we have important kingdom work to do. And so that I pray that women start to believe that. So yeah, I would love to, mm -hmm. to pray over us. Father, we, um, we just love you and we're just thankful that, that you love us and that you created us and that we are significant, um, apart from anything that we do, but just simply for who we are as your daughters. 
And so I pray that we just first rest in that, that we is we don't have to earn your love. We don't have to strive. None of this work that we are doing is um, to make you love us anymore. But Father, just out of an overflow of the love that you've already given us, Father, help us to be encouraged and to listen and obey and be willing to do what you've called us to do. Help us to hear your voice. Help Mm -hmm. us to just believe that you see us, that you hear Mm -hmm. us and that you are using every little thing that we do. And that father, that you are going to take it a long way. But I just pray for every woman that you would just give her a glimpse, that you would give her a taste, that you would give her um, some of the fruit um, of, Mm -hmm. of her labor father, and that she would know Mm -hmm. that you're partnering with her, that you're watering those seeds and that you have a beautiful outcome in store both now and for eternity. Father, we just love you you so much. I pray blessings and favor over each woman listening. Um, and it's in your holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rachel. God is with us in all the little things. What a beautiful thing to remember. Rachel has such a calming presence, and it was such a gift to have this conversation with her. Well, before we go, be sure to check out our show notes for a link to Rachel's website where you can find her devotional and podcast. You can find that and more, including a new blog article at godhearsher.org. That's godhearsher.org. And if you liked this episode or you've been listening to the show for a bit, please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget, God hears you and he sees you and he loves you because you are his. Today's episode was engineered by Ann Stevens and produced by Jade Gussman and Mary Jo Clark. We also want to thank Hannah and Judy for all their help and support. Thanks, everyone. Our Daily Bread Ministries is a donor-supported nonprofit ministry dedicated to making the life-changing wisdom and stories of the Bible come alive for all people around the world. God Hears Her is a production of our Daily Bread Ministries.